welcome to the stage Inversion co-founder and CEO, Justin Fishin. Look at this. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Very excited to have everyone here. A lot of awesome, friendly faces in the audience. Um, and we have some exciting, exciting stuff to share with you guys. Hopefully, you're able to get some drinks, have some snacks um, in our brand new facility. Um, we just moved in here uh, this year, and it's been a pretty big year for Inversion so far. Not only have we moved in here, we've tripled the size of the team and a lot of folks in the audience today, which is awesome. <laughs> And we've also, we also flew our first spacecraft, which went very, very well. So, very exciting. We, we have something pretty special for you guys today. Um, when we think about accessing the globe, there is, uh, there is kind of this technology step change that has happened across history. So, going back a little bit, when the sailing ship was first invented, you could now access the globe anywhere on Earth in about three years. And like to them, that probably felt super fast, right? Like, oh, sweet, it doesn't take me a literal lifetime anymore. But now we've moved on, and the introduction of the railroad helped with that. That took it down to a couple of months. And then finally, the introduction of the airplane, which is where we sit today, brings us to 24 hours. And that feels fast, right? It feels very quick to be able to go anywhere on Earth in 24 hours. But we started asking ourselves, well, what if that was too slow? What would you do then? And we can kind of look to our military as an example of what to do when 24 hours is just too long. And the way they solve that is they dot places around the globe, they dot warehouses and bases all over to have their cargo close to where the fight is going to be, because 24 hours is too long for them. So they have hundreds of bases all spread out with massive logistics chains, et cetera, all to get down to like four or five hours, right? It's not very quick still. And that's left us with a very fragile logistics chain. It's left us with a very large expense. And even so, we still are only at four or five hours. And so it's pretty clear to us that the world needs a better solution. We need to take another one of those steps. Uh, and that's what we want to do here at Inversion. We want to solve that problem because 24 hours is just not fast enough. And my co-founder and I noticed something when we used to be working in the launch industry. We noticed something about the space industry that at the time, everybody thought about space as a destination. Somewhere you go to, somewhere you fly something, going to explore, think space stations, uh, think experimentation. But the real value of space, the true place that you can extract useful value out of it, is using space to access the globe. And that's very clear when we look at companies that do GPS or satellite imagery or internet from space. Accessing the globe from space provides near real-time coverage of the globe. And so we started asking ourselves, what if you could do that, but with a vehicle that could carry physical cargo rather than data? And that's exactly what we've done. So today, we are very excited to introduce a new type of vehicle, one designed to bring us from 24 hours that we sit at today to access the whole globe down to just one hour. We're excited to introduce to you a brand new type of spacecraft, a space-based delivery vehicle. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the first space-based delivery vehicle, the ARC. So, ARC is not a space capsule, um, it's not a space plane, it's something completely different. Uh, it is a brand new type of vehicle designed from the ground up to enable one hour delivery from space. And so we wanted to reimagine what a spacecraft looks like and what it does to enable this global access in under an hour. And we started off by asking, what are the most important parts if we want to access the globe? And the first thing we saw was that we did not want customers to have to make special payloads in order to 
take advantage of this. And so ARC's payload bay is designed to carry any payload in orbit for up to five years comfortably without any modifications to it. So what you put in the warehouse on the ground, you can put in space and get it down in under an hour. Next, we didn't want to have to have hundreds or even thousands of the same payload in orbit in order to have this global access. And so ARC is designed to have extreme maneuverability, especially in the hypersonic and supersonic regimes of reentry. That allows one vehicle to cover a vast area of the ground, limiting the number needed on orbit to achieve global coverage. And then finally, if we really want to land anywhere and go have true global access, we have to be able to land on any terrain. And so we've developed a system on ARC that allows us to land anywhere, anytime, whether that is on rough terrain, in the ocean, or on flat land with our autonomous landing system. I would love to show you guys more about how ARC works. It's some pretty cool stuff. It's pretty dope. So by pre-positioning ARCs on orbit, customers have the ability to access anywhere on Earth in under an hour. And when we think about here at Inversion, OK, where is this going to get used? What is the go-to-market on this? The first place that we're fully focused on is defense and serving that community. They have payloads that are very high value with missions that time is of the utmost importance. And so that is where we're fully focused on to date. And that, asks, that begs the question, what kind of payloads are we going to carry? So ARC is very much focused on being a transportation mode. right? It's agnostic to the specific payload it carries, but for these early missions, we like to define it as mission-enabling payloads. Payloads that you need in a very short period of time in remote, austere, or denied environments, that getting that is the difference between a success and a failure. When you are lost or when you are at the, uh, at the end of something that you didn't predict or even did predict, getting an ARC down from orbit can be a saving grace in that moment. And so ARC is a very exciting product, and we're excited to share more about the technical details of it. So with that, I'd like to welcome to the stage my co-founder and CTO, Austin Briggs. <laughs> Thank you so much, Justin. 
So we are incredibly, incredibly excited to show off the spacecraft that we've been working on for a really long time now. I've got many uh, faces here in the room that have been uh, absolutely critical to the development of this vehicle. Um, and so as CTO, I have the privilege of working with a pretty extraordinary team. Uh, and this is the very team that's going to be turning this ARC vehicle and delivery from space into a reality. So um, our team has decades of aerospace innovation experience, um, everything from just a small sampling of leading the aerodynamic design of the world's first privately developed hypersonic vehicle uh, to uh, building the world's most advanced joint precision airdrop systems to enabling the guidance, navigation, and control of the early Falcon 9 landings and operating countless rocket and satellite systems, just to name a few. So with all this talent under this one roof, uh, we have everything in place to actually go and make this a reality. And so let's take a closer look at the vehicle. So. As Justin kind of mentioned, this vehicle was built from the ground up, from a complete clean sheet for this delivery from space concept. And the very first striking feature you're going to notice is its shape. Um, ARC is known as a lifting body design. That means that the actual shape of the vehicle is designed to produce lift and be highly maneuverable uh, while it's coming back at 25 times the speed of sound. Um, this is absolutely crucial to all of the different use cases that we have in being able to do these, this maneuvering um, and be able to kind of bring that cargo to where it needs to be. Now, this maneuverability comes about because it allows a single ARC vehicle to service an incredibly large geographic area and do so with an incredible precision and do so with incredibly fast time to ground. Um, while this model you see here today is just a representation of the vehicle that we have, um, it, this thing is far from conceptual. I wish we could show all of the progress that has been made on this, um, but we have done everything from developing aerodynamic OML to run countless computational fluid dynamics simulations, six degree of freedom runs, uh, and also closed loop simulations, just to name a few. In fact, uh, we actually already have our first structural MDU that's sitting right over there, um, to, so you can see a little bit about what this vehicle looks like underneath. And in fact, wind tunnel testing is actually going to be commencing here very shortly. Of course, uh, if you know anything about hypersonics or re-entering, you know that uh, re-entering the atmosphere is, uh, subjects the vehicle to some pretty crazy stuff. Um, unimaginably high temperatures, enough to vaporize metal. And so that's why, for the past four and a half years, we have been partnered with NASA Ames Research Center, some of which are in the room today. Um, they are the global leader in thermal protection systems. Uh, they have over 60 years of experience, countless successful re-entries, and uh, many, many uh, astronauts safely brought back from the ISS and the moon. Um, and so we couldn't be asked for a, a better partner to be helping make this a reality. Um, so together, we've developed ARC's Advanced Heat Shield. It's a combination of cutting edge ablative and reusable materials that cover everything from the tip of the nose all the way down to the maneuverable flaps you see at the aft. Now, these materials are mission enabling for ARC. And uh, thanks to our agreement with NASA Ames, we're also in the process of manufacturing some of this in-house for long-term uh, production. Now, delivering from space is not just about surviving re-entry, it is also about landing precisely, uh, whether that is in remote terrain, harsh weather, denied areas, or unpredictable conditions. To achieve this, ARC uses an actively guided parachute system that is able to steer, maneuver, redirect, and softly touch down anywhere it's needed. Um, it relies on our custom-built processing core and autonomy stack that's running on our in-house developed flight computer that's just over on the table over there. Um, this, can, this system combines AI, advanced guidance, navigation, and control, uh, computer vision to ensure that ARC lands within feet of its target anywhere in the world. In short, ARC is the most capable skydiver ever built. So we've been testing this capability extensively and uh, have had dozens of drop tests and countless time under canopy. And so I'm incredibly excited to show you all a little bit about what one of these test days looks like.
I want to reiterate a couple of things. On this pass, we want to confirm that we have vector nav and telem once we are flying, and then we'll go in for a hot pass. That is so cool. The, the, the team has absolutely crushed it on that. Um, you know, we, we think that not only should the world have a super advanced transportation method, but that transportation method should also be beautiful. And we think that ARC is definitely one of the most beautiful spacecraft we've ever seen. And so good work on that. And you know, ARC will have the most advanced aerodynamics, the most advanced heat shield, the highest performance accurate landing system of basically anything in the world. And we're really excited about that. And so have customers. Customers have also been incredibly excited about the capabilities ARC will bring to them. Last year, we announced a $71 million StratFi contract uh, focused on ARC and focused on delivery from space. But that's not the only place that we've had customers asking for ARC. Uh, when we were talking to folks, we kept hearing, hey, ARC can maneuver, we would love to use that for hypersonic testing. And so that is exactly what we're doing. Um, ARC is one of the most advanced hypersonic test platforms that exist, allowing for uh, high maneuverability throughout reentry above Mach 20, um, allowing for time on condition, far exceeding anything else that exists as well as flying high G maneuvers. So we're incredibly, incredibly proud to say that we've joined Kratos on the Mach TB 2.0 contract. This is a program of record that is about $1.4 billion and is the country's leading hypersonic testing program. So we're excited for that and excited for that partnership um, and uh, couldn't be more grateful for it. So we've been making a ton of progress. The facility's looking great, the vehicle's looking great, and we you won't have to wait very long to see ARC fly because first flight is next year. So flying for the first time in 2026, and we will have our first operational delivery from space constellation on orbit in 2028. So we hope you guys have enjoyed seeing a little bit about what we've been working on with ARC. We're really excited about all of the progress we've made and have a lot more to share soon. So you'll be hearing more from us and about ARC over the coming months. Um, feel free to hang out, come and take pictures uh, in front of ARC, come and find me, uh, and really appreciate everybody being here today. So thank you very much. Yeah.